Dale. It's Guido coming at you with the Tactics Talk. Welcome back, guys, and thanks for tuning in. Today, we're going to talk about picking apart campers. The old camp alarm and ding dang. How do you break a camp in a world of tanks? A lot of it has to do with the map, obviously, the mode, the situation during the match that you're in, whether you need to do it or, or not, etc. We're going to show you an example right here. We're going to talk about some of the common themes that are involved. This is a pretty good one for having to break camps, though, on highway. Because quite often you've got to break the camp along here on the E or F row. If you're on our spawn moving down into the south into their into their spawn or potentially coming from the city. And the same thing can happen from the purples standpoint trying to break the camp that's up here in the northeast corner. But obviously we're going to talk about this one from the spawn in the northeast and then working down to the southwest. You can see that I do have optics on this tank and that is very helpful for things like this. This is the British wheel tank. It is a medium, not a scout, but it's got decent mobility and pretty dang good vision. So I take a look. I'm going to jump off this and almost that was dumb. Good job. I have to waste a kit, so don't do that. I thought I was going to make that jump and not damage myself, but clearly not. So we've got to pay attention to what's going on. I'm going to come over here to the northwest corner here. And of course, I don't know what I'm going to run into. So right now, I have no idea this game is going to go the way it's going to go, but I do understand the match and the mode. And as I start to gather information, I start to understand what the situation is, and then we can apply the appropriate tactical decision to take it on. And I'm noticing that they did not send anybody into this corner. Now, first of all, the Super Hellcat went there, so obviously there's nobody there. One thing you can do when you approach here, you don't have to go as far as I did if you're going to hang out back here, is zoom out and look at this these walls right here, especially these along this edge right there, see if they're broken. If they're broken and stuff's been knocked down, there's probably a tank hanging out back here. Sometimes they'll cruise along here and not knock it down, but generally they try to go behind here. So that'll let you know. Of course, the Hellcat has figured that out completely for us, which means, check it out, and we're starting to get that SA with the Lance and the Upcity and the IKV. They're camping. Generally, purple teams don't... Hey, you know what? I was about to say generally purple teams don't go into that corner, but I've, I've run into both. It just kind of depends. I feel like the purple team has an advantage there, and it's harder for the green team to do what we did, but they decided to just give up on it. Very helpful for us. Now, that means we have good map control and vision control, but it doesn't mean we've won this flank. As a matter of fact, they have a shit ton of tanks here, guys. The three of their eights are hanging out over here. So I'm going to move up here. I'm going to take this position, and I know in this I'll go a little further. I know in this little flat position, I can peek up and get lights on these guys. And it looks like the Hellcat, he's going to go a little bit further forward. I don't really like that spot where he's going because it is, it is targetable by guys here in these buildings, so it's not as safe as mine. And of course, we are looking at one artillery. What I'm doing is not really a two or three artillery move at the moment two or three artillery, and as light as my tank is, I probably get deleted from this position pretty quickly. The other piece is the LHMTV is owning the vision down here. So other than some guys maybe in these buildings, and even they don't have great shots on me, I'm not worried about getting flanked or them taking the middle part and shooting us from behind. At least right now, the LHMTV is taking care of that. So an interesting situation, and now we're able to start picking apart these campers. We're just going to use our vision. It doesn't take a whole lot of vision when you're this close. You just need to get her up and over and let them see you. Okay, ooh, ooh, and 4190 GF. Okay, that's good. Let's go find him. Now, see how he doesn't really have a great shot on me? He has a bit of a shot, but not a great one. Put a little shot on him. Very nice. So now I can shoot up here where the M2Y and the rest of these guys are. The guys down in the buildings, if they get lit, i.e. by the LHMTV, he's the one keeping them on us. I've got shots in each direction where ricochet off that guy. And every time he exposes himself, then there's shots by the guys back there. The Hellcat's sort of getting beat up. This is unfortunate because that's the problem with his position. We're not, ooh, I don't know how I got through on that one. No idea. I pressed two, it worked out for me. Hellcat's dead, guys. That's why I don't like that spot. It's just not survivable at this point in the game. I'm trying to sneak one there. Now, I thought, and be quite honest, if they want to win this game, 
coming around this corner here, keeping low. Yep, they might get shot by some of these guys. Even just going by and shredding me or pushing me out and then pushing into the Super and the T20. Clean us three up with their Tier 8s and 7s here, and it's all over but the Shouten. Good news is this is a pub match, and generally if you've got people who are content to camp back here like this, they're, they're not very uh, aggressive players. That's just the way it is. So they're happy to just sit back there and lose hit points. And we're happy to take the hit points slowly and conserve ours. Let me try to shoot this guy. I don't know how that got through. Something was blocking it, but... The Obsidian is kind of a pain. I'm going to end up bouncing off this guy quite a bit. It's got real pretty good armor for a little medium like it is. Like, all right, can I get a shot off? No, not quite. The M2Y seems to get it. I think he's sort of understands the assignment here. He just doesn't have the beef to do it. Uh-oh. Now this guy's pushing in. Hellcat. Great. I don't have great depression. I have okay to... Alright. That's a problem. I don't have great depression. I have okay depression. The problem is if the artillery starts paying too much attention to me, I may have to run away. Now, now I'm trying to deal with this guy. I do. I get a lot of bounces off him trying to get into his side. He's missing. Oh, jeez. Didn't work. One more maybe? Come on, baby. Oh, and he gets me. All right, that sucked. I'm going to pull back a bit. Yep, there's Yari. Thank goodness he missed me again. And this guy gets in a little too close. He's looking at me. He misses. To be honest, a couple of these misses have been very fortunate for me. A couple of those hit, and I'm down to a one shot. But you take what you got. This is what's happening. You can always speculate about what would have been nice and what would have been good, but and that's all fine. You can take a look at all those. That was poorly aimed by me. But in the heat of battle, while you're maneuvering your tank, you have to take what you've got at that moment. And again, I just, honestly, this team, if they'd have just pushed us, all these guys just YOLO in here, they'd have crushed us. We've lost some hit points along the way. There's a Progetto back there for fire support, but that's it. Other than the LHM TV and some artillery. Like I said, it's good news for us when you've got camping teams, they are generally not very good, and they are willing to just sit there and bleed hit points and not push. I wanted to try to go, come up and over and kill him. Another miss, I'll take it, and a, another miss. The gun depression sort of got me, but look at that. Let me nuke that dude. And we're just making these guys pay, just picking apart the campers. Picking apart the campers. I know this spot's here, it's working for me. I will leave if I have to, but so far I haven't had to. And the enemy team is starting to lose tanks big time. So we've done some good damage over here. Considering what tanks we have over here, we've tied up a significant amount of their tanks and their tier 8s, to be honest. What is it? What do we got over here? We've got the, the Lanson, the Obsidian, was the KPZ, the 4190 GF. All those guys were over here. So now we're just looking to try to clean up a few more of them. So I would love to go where the Hellcat is, but it, just pause it here for a second. Notice they've still got a significant number of tanks here. The IKV Super Hellcat 25-2, another IKVB, and the Obsidian. So me kind of just walking out into the open here and allowing two or three of them to hit me, I'm out of the game at that point. But we notice they're moving backwards. That, that was lucky, I'll take it. Can we get them? Not quite. The other IKV is there. Super Hellcat's peeking over. Oh, okay, so he's just on the other side of that little ridge. And pretty quickly I'll make my decision to move up. But it's being careful, guys. It's understanding this piece of terrain right here and where we are in the game. Paying attention to how our heavies are doing. And they look like maybe they're about to lose, but they actually do a really nice job down there. The Obsidian is more or less out of the game. There's not a whole lot he can do. He can't affect me very much. I, he probably got some shots on these guys, but he just hasn't done much. we got a tier 8 that's just sitting there. In fact, he's really just getting farmed by people. There we go. Put a shot on him. Don't quite see him. Like, where is that guy? Shoot. Nope. All right. So we'll sneak up here. Their KB-5 dies. And at this point, we're just in great shape. Unless I make a serious mistake here and just walk out into shots, we've got this pretty much locked down. I'm waiting a little bit to see if the city can close out those last two guys and start putting pressure on them. The Obsidian dies, that's fantastic. Good job on the LHMTV. 
that is that's what you love to see from your light tanks guys is those critical closeouts on low hit point guys towards the mid to end game those can be so important to win in the game so good on them. sweet down goes that guy you know and it's not a case of i'm running around doing you know 3000 assist and 3000 damage i, I got a combined 2300 now but we just kept so many of their tanks busy and just kept picking away at the campers. Absolutely just obliterating guys who are content to sit back. And while this position is pretty strong for the purple team, there are other maps where there are much stronger positions where doing what I'm doing here with a bunch of other bushes and stuff where I'm not lighting them, that can be that can be problematic because then you're just losing hit points trying to spot guys you're never going to spot. That's why I said at the beginning, you got to understand the map, the mode, the teams. That can certainly change things. Oh, there we go. I finally, finally take a big hit. Somebody finally gets a hit on me. Come over here and find this guy. Now I'm, now I'm really getting beat up. IKV took a shot. Nope, I don't want him to shoot. Notice what I did right there, guys, as I saw him on the other side of that building. I just wanted to make that shot harder. I think he's actually trying to come around it. He is. He's trying to come around the building. He should have gone through it, to be honest. Trying to get a shot. So that's why I carved left, because I knew that would give him trouble. He's a casemate. He was hiding around the corner of that. That's at least going to force him to move and try to get a shot on me. That's unfortunate. See, he missed. He just missed. Oh, what? <laughs> Bounced him. Uh, my ammo storage is down, but that's all right. We get up to 1,408 assist. Grab a few cap points. Why not? 2,138 damage, so a combined uh, 3,500 damage game. So not a case of me absolutely carrying the entire team, but a good example situationally for this map, this position in particular, the one I was using, but the idea of it, the general principle of staying safe, exposing trying to make smart exposures right to make good trades if you can but at the same time spotting for people who are sitting in the back and getting getting shots on them and if the enemy team like this one shows a willingness to willingness to just sit there and not push you then keep doing what you're doing absolutely got lucky in a couple of cases on misses but i'll take those uh, so i just want to show you that the, a good example of what i'm talking about there when picking apart campers it can get much more difficult when you start talking about other maps that have better positions in terms of bushes and things but this is pretty typical on this map along the ef row over there that you can quite often pick apart guys who are camping in there with a with a little bit of effort that's all i've got let me know what you think down below we will see ya